Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you so much for joining us today for the CMS Workshop Wednesdays webinar series. My name is Heather Campbell, and I am a senior recruiter at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Thank you again for joining us. So excited to have you here. Um, so this webinar will be recorded and posted to YouTube. And one of my colleagues, Sean, thank you so much for joining me today. We'll be posting the link in the chat box. Um, there will also be a follow-up email sent to all of the participants without the slides, but there will be an email. Um, so the questions, the questions in the Q&A box. Regarding content we are covering um, or for any of our guest speakers today, um, you can provide questions in our Q&A box that will also be monitored by my colleague, Sean. So today's webinar is all about culture, specifically CMS culture defined. And um, we're gonna start off um, our webinar today with a really quick overview um, of CMS and jump right into the conversation. So a little bit about the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, also known as CMS. We manage uh, policy for programs such as Medicare, Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program, federal health insurance exchanges, and so forth programs that you may have heard of. Um, and these programs really combine and touch the lives of over 145 million Americans. We have 10 regional offices around the country and we're headquartered in Baltimore, Maryland with a small DC Bethesda office. Um, we hire a variety of different positions in various fields, um, such as health administration and policy, media and communications, business, finance and program support, technology, mathematics, and science. And so I'm going to start, um, as we go into the culture portion of our webinar today, I'm going to start by giving our very broad and fluid definition of culture here at CMS. So what is culture? What is culture defined? Um, and we define culture as a company culture. Um, it's a business attitude, um, values, behaviors, and goals from entry-level workers to executive management. A company's culture defines the way people interact with each other and the way the company makes decisions. Culture can affect how many tasks you complete in a day, how often your company holds meetings and how open management is to discuss new ideas. A company's culture may be expressly and deliberately cultivated, or it may simply result from the accumulation of decisions made over time. With a strong company, company culture, employees understand the expected outcomes and behaviors and act accordingly. So we're so excited today because we have panelists from three completely different fields within CMS to share their personal experience about CMS culture. This will be a moderated discussion where I will pose some questions and each panelist will have a chance to respond. If you have any specific questions, again, please feel free to use the Q&A, and we will try to get those questions at the end. And thank you so much, Sean, for moderating uh, the chat box. So I will caveat, caveat, caveat um, this discussion that while an organization can have an overall culture, individual departments can have their own cultures as well within CMS. So this may be a discussion today, as our panelists will each have their own experiences and opinions, which may not always match up. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our panelists. So um, in no specific order, we have Sheree Belton, and she is from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation. We have Jordi Luke from the Office of Minority Health and Dennis Sendros from the Centers for Program Integrity. And we talked about it and we said, this would just kind of be a general introduction from each of the panelists. So panelists, I will go ahead and let you guys take the floor before we start our questions. Great, I will go first. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sheree Belton. And once again, I work in the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation. I've been with CMS for 10 years, I'm sorry, five years, a federal government, uh, government employee for 10 years, and I've been in my current component for three years. I am currently an HR liaison um, between our managers and our Office of Human Capital Office. So welcome everyone. 
Good morning and uh, good afternoon for those that are not on the East Coast time. My name is Jordi Luke, pronouns they, them, and he, him, uh, or él and ella if you speak Spanish. Um, I am in the CMS Office of Minority Health. I'm the, the director of the Program Alignment Partner Engagement Group, um, and we focus on advancing equity for racial and ethnic minorities, LGBTQ plus people, people with disabilities, people with limited English proficiency, and uh, rural populations. Um, so I'm excited to chat with you all about the work that we're doing across the agency around advancing equity, which is a big part of our culture right now. And um, with that, I will turn it over to Dennis. Thanks, Jordi. Uh, my name is Dennis Sendros. Uh, I work in the Center for Program Integrity, uh, handling risk assessments for CMS programs. Um, before that, I worked in uh, the Office of Legislation um, in CMS for about uh, five, six years. Um, and before that, I, I worked in Congress for about six years. Um, and so been with the federal government overall for about 13 years now. It's been a great time. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again for being with us. And we're going to go ahead and get started with the first question, which is, generally speaking, how would you describe the culture within CMS? So from my perspective, I would definitely say it's one of collaboration, um, not just with your peers and your colleagues, but across the agency. I know I interact with um, several components within CMS, but I definitely feel like it's, it's a culture of collaboration and it's highly encouraged. And I would, I would definitely co-sign that and also add that um, I think we also have a culture that is grounded in diversity, equity, and inclusion um, in not only um, the policies and programs that we're working on right now, but also in the many ways that we support staff across the agency. Um, so that that is definitely a big part of, of, uh, of the culture that we're, we're trying to advance within CMS. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, agree with everything that Sheree and Jordy said. Um, I'd also add that that our culture um, is very family friendly um, and respectful of people's sort of off work time. Um, I, you know, uh, whenever somebody needs to take time to, to deal with uh, personal issues, there's uh, there's allowance made for that, um, which I, I find, you know, very helpful. Um, I'd also add the, that uh, the organization, at least in my neck of the woods, um, can be fairly hierarchical, um, which is not a positive or a negative. It's just you know um, a way to to manage work and and sort of navigate in the world. Really great feedback on agency culture, and it sounds that like you all share some of the same experiences with the culture in your respective organizations. So the next one is: Would you make any? distinctions about the organizational culture as a result of the pandemic and how have things changed for you? I'll uh, go first so you're not on the hook to go first every time Sherry. <laughs> um, I would say that it's uh, uh, it, to add to what Dennis was share, sharing um, a lot of flexibility um, obviously, um, there has, there's been a lot on our plate related to the pandemic because we are engaging with a lot of the healthcare systems that are, are, are addressing the pandemic. Um, but the agency has gone above and beyond to uh, provide flexibility to employees so that they have work-life balance and safety is prioritized. Um, uh, it's also exciting to be a part of the response to um, the pandemic. Um, so a big part of, of what we do um, has significant impact as well in the, the healthcare landscape across the country. So those are two things I would highlight uh, that have really kind of bubbled to the top since the pandemic is just how committed the agency is to um, uh, employee safety 
and then also um, impact as well. Um, turn it over to others to add. Yeah, um, no, I think that's all right. Um, I know that in my division, um, you know, several of my employees have, have kids who in the last couple of years, they've needed to provide spontaneous child care for um, when, you know, um, something or another went wrong. And um, we've always, uh, you know, made that work and made sure that, that, you know, the work got done, but that they had the time they needed to take care of their families. Um, I think that one of the great things that I've seen out of the pandemic is how much the agency does care about our health and safety. We've been 100% remote since, I don't know, March or April of 2020, whenever, whenever that started exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, we've gotten regular um, feedback about how when we go back to the office that, you know, things won't exactly be the same as they were. It's not just going to be status quo ante. It's, it's uh, we're going to take a sort of future-minded focus and, and think about what return to the workplace looks like. Um, so that, that has been very helpful. Um, And just a quick note on how I think things have changed. I think there is now a spotlight on remote workers. So for those of us that were required to go into the office prior to the pandemic, now that we're all remote, I think there's an emphasis on how we um, communicate and um, work with our 100% remote workers and making sure that they're inclusive of um, you know, activities and meetings and the like. I love that um, you all had some similar experiences with flexibility and feeling safe. And also one of the things that many people who to apply for our positions are not always aware of is when you work with CMS, you do have an opportunity to be a part of some of those cutting edge healthcare challenges and issues and really being able to have a direct impact. So really great to hear um, your experiences in the pandemic with CMS. Um, so kind of going back to thinking back to your first experiences with CMS when you first came on board um, in your first role, what was the biggest adjustment for you when you started working at the agency? Don't all speak at once. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll go first on this one. Um, I came over from, from Congress, which is a, a very different world. Um, I, I'd say that um, CMS, and I think it shares this with most of the executive branch, um, is um, a much, this is going to sound pejorative, but it's really not. It's, it, it, things move slower here. Um, the reason for that, of course, is that we have 5,000 people and we manage healthcare for 145 million people, and any minor misstep can mean um, lives truly devastated. Um, so, so we take things very carefully in a congressional office, you know, um, something happens in the morning and within an hour, you need a press release out. And by the end of the day, you need a speech written and, and, you know, to go to the floor with it. So, um, things can move very quickly there. They move a lot slower here and the more levels of review, but there are reasons for that. Um, and yeah, I've been here for seven years. I don't think it's a negative thing. Um, so I, I would say that was my my biggest sort of culture shock um, that that I experienced when coming here. Um, on a lighter note, for me, uh, my biggest <laughs> adjustment was getting used to my less than five minute commute to the office. <laughs> Which, um, which was awesome because I started working in Rockville from Baltimore. Then I started working in DC from Baltimore and then Alexandria from Baltimore. So coming this close um, or living this close from the office was a huge adjustment. And then also just finding out who all the, you know, the players are and making sure that, you know, you're talking to the right people and addressing people properly and, um, knowing who everyone is as well. Yeah, sure. I think understanding the federal lingo and, you know, the networking is all an adjustment coming into 
um, a federal agency and actually physically being in the bit building, you know, as we speak, pre-pandemic engagement. So that's good, good experience to hear about. Absolutely. Jordy, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I was gonna mention acronyms as well. I mean, there's so many acronyms to learn when we first joined. There's literally a uh, tool uh, during the onboarding process to help you learn the acronym, but it probably needs to be updated because there's always new acronyms being added in, in, in this healthcare arena. Um, but also on a lighter note, um, for, for those that have the pleasure of moving to Baltimore, I absolutely love, love, love Baltimore. And um, it's such a wonderful city with um, a lot of arts and um, uh, great restaurants. And um, you, you really uh, uh, can come to a community where the cost of living isn't as high as DC, um, but it's still a big metropolitan area. Yeah, it's not, not, not the cheapest city to live, but it's not DC cost of living. And, um, uh, so when I when I did have the chance to move to Baltimore, it it I just fell in love with the city and the people and all the things that that exist here. So don't don't pay attention to all the all the all the bad talk about Baltimore. It it actually is a, a an amazing city. Yes, I agree. I too fell in love with Baltimore. So I'm right there with you. Love being in the city. Um, so this next question is more about your experience in your specific departments or areas. Um, so regarding where you're working now, are new ideas welcome and encouraged? How does that usually look in your department? How do, how do you handle new ideas in your department, your area? So working in the Innovation Center, um, ideas uh, are strongly encouraged, absolutely welcome. Um, I do believe there is a, an email inbox that we can use to you know, submit those ideas, but you can always talk to your senior leadership, your managers, your supervisors, and, and share that information with them. But, um, Innovation is, is highly recommended in our, in our division, in our department. I agree 1000%, um, especially now that we're moving towards value-based reimbursement, um, you know, away from a fee-for-service payment model in healthcare. Um, I don't think that the, that anyone's quite figured out the perfect formula for, for what that looks like. And so we are in, a, in an environment right now where we're all trying to uh, come up with the best policies that advance quality and, and, and patient experience for everyone, including for historically underserved population. So it's always nice to, to have new people join the team because um, they bring fresh, fresh ideas and, and those are certainly those are certainly welcomed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will. I will add a, a wrinkle um, here that uh, many of our programs, not many, all of our programs, are are governed at the end of the day by statute and regulation, right? And if if Congress has put a certain restriction to place, um, then Believe me, I wanted to get around many of them, um, but uh, you know, all the new ideas in the world aren't going to uh, aren't going to change statute, um, which doesn't mean we can't try, and we do sometimes, and we are even successful sometimes. Um, but I, all to say, I'm echoing everything Sheree and Jordy said about welcoming new ideas. I, I'm the director of the Division of Vulnerabilities, Innovation, and Strategy, so we are all about innovating. Um, but we do run into just sort of hard limits on what government can do because of the way we're set up sometimes. Um, and we need to um, find ways to get around that or to barrel through it or sometimes to sort of deal with it and, and live in the world we have, unfortunately. Thank you so much for your perspective. So we're gonna move on to professional development, career development, um, and your experiences with career development within CMS. So what kind of growth and career opportunities, uh, career and development opportunities are there at CMS?
Well, in our in our office, um, we are always encouraging our team to um, invest in, in in their own development, especially in areas where someone is either a lead on a topic area or or a program to continue to further develop that technical expertise, including as as Dennis was sharing what the what the policies are, what the law says we can and cannot do related to that. So oftentimes um, staff have chances to attend conferences, um, uh, um, attend grand rounds within the agency. Um, there are also um, trainings that are established by the employee resource groups around diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have the CMS University. Um, uh, there are smaller meetings that generally happen where other agencies like CDC, ACL, HRSA, SAMHSA um, are working with us to um, collaborate and, and share what is happening. So I think, I think this is, uh, of all the places I've worked, this is where um, development is, is, uh, is, is a part of our, 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 our work. And, and um, uh, at least in my office, um, we've we've made it a priority so that we're we're again thinking about how we can move the needle on equity issues. Yeah, this is this is one of my favorite things about CMS. Honestly, is is how many opportunities there are. Um, we are, like I said before, a, a five thousand person organization, right? So, like, whether you want to work on you know policy in Medicare or Medicaid or other programs, or you want to work on you know, diversity, equity, inclusion issues, you want to work in the innovation center. There's, there's so much to do here. And, um, you know, the, that sort of ability to move around and to learn from different people, even if you're not moving, um, I think is absolutely incredible. I will also say one of my, one of, I think the best things about the federal government is, is detail opportunities where you're able to actually, you know, go to another organization within CMS or even outside and work there for three, four months and do the job and then come back to your role. And that benefits you because you've learned a lot doing that work. It benefits your, uh, your, you know, your division that you came from because then they gain all that experience um, that you gained uh, while you were away. And it benefits the division you went to because they needed someone to do some some level of work or they wouldn't be offering a detail opportunity. Um, and that, that's just something that I think is fairly unique to the federal government. Um, that is just a huge benefit. I love that. Really yeah. great feedback around the flexibility with, you know, being able to explore new opportunities um, with CMS. And we talked a lot about um, when we when we talked a little bit earlier about what you uh, what your experience was with the culture at CMS, um, one of the things we I think Dennis you mentioned was about how you've seen the flexibility with um, family members and just healthcare issues and people needing to have a really good sense of work life balance and being supported and able to do that in the CMS environment um, in the CMS culture. So I guess that is. One of the questions, the next question for you all, which is what does work-life balance look for you? Look like for you? What does work-life balance look like for you? Um, I would say for me, it's being able to walk my dog at lunchtime. Um, even when I was in the office <laughs> living so close, um, just being able to come here and, and you know have that time off from work. But once again, just having understanding managers and supervisors and um, knowing that they're there, as Dennis has said, to let you, you know, flex out if needed, um, no questions asked, just making sure that you're okay, because if you're okay, then the work that you do for them, you know, will be done properly and in order. Yeah, I am. Um... I actually recently adopted a dog and having the flexibility to um, walk her and, and get her properly used to, you know, my apartment has been huge. So I'll, I'll echo what Sheree said. I'll, I'll also say, you know, last year, um, my grandfather had a health scare and there was a moment where I needed to um, 
just leave work middle of the day, drive to New Jersey and deal with things. Um, and, you know, I sent my boss an email about five minutes before I took off, but there wasn't anything that was going to stop me from going to New Jersey. And, um, and even before I left, I, I got an email back saying, yes, absolutely go. Um, and just knowing that I would be backed up like that, um, was huge. And, and, um, you know, uh, it's a huge benefit of working here. Um, and, and knowing that's there. Um, I'll also say I rarely, not never, but rarely work more than 40 hours a week, um, which is also very, very nice. Um, I wish I could say the same. <laughs> uh, well, one thing I will add that's pretty awesome about um, work-life balance here in CMS that I think is very unique to the federal government is our very generous um, sick leave policy. Um, and I, I say generous because for, for, for most employers out there, you have a year to lose your sick leave and then you, you lose it. But um, in, the, in the federal government, at least in CMS, whatever sick leave you don't use rolls over to the following year. Um, I'm someone that rarely takes sick leave. Um, and I think right now I have about 400 hours accrued of sick leave. And so when I think of work-life balance, I think of those emergency situations where I want to take care of my family and loved ones. Um, and I know that there's, there's a system set up to make sure that I don't fall through the cracks. I love that. I love um, what your response was, Jordy, around the fact that you have this kind of safe place for your leave and your time when it's ready, when you're ready to take advantage of that. And I agree. One of the benefits is absolutely um, the leave offering within the federal government. And then also, I know for me, I'll share that I have really appreciated the flexible schedule, being able to take a flexible schedule um, and having a flexible workday um, if emergencies come up with my children or things need urgent attention, I'm able to walk away and feel safe and comfortable that my, my colleagues are going to back me up and that I have the support from my management. So love that. Love the conversation about self-care and work-life balance. So another, we have a few more questions. There are about three more questions and we're doing really great on time. I know I really want to make sure we are honor our one o'clock in time. Um, and I'll be taking a poll later and we'll be answering some questions um, later, but just really quickly, um, just one last question, if you guys will, um, and you guys can give your own responses on what makes you proud about working at CMS? For me, it's the mission. It's the mission of the agency. I mean, how can you not be proud to work for an agency that works so hard for their beneficiaries? And also being a resource to friends and family, knowing that I work here, um, being able to provide them with information when and if I can. Yeah, that's that's it exactly. We provide health care for 145 million people. I mean, that's huge. Um, and yeah, I don't know, even even small changes to our programs can make differences in the lives of so many of those folks. Um, so, you know, working every day to make incremental change, we, we are, you know, we're not going to revamp the whole healthcare system because again, our, most of our programs are governed by statute. There's, there's <laughs> things we, we've really got to follow. Um, but even being, being able to make even small changes can impact so many lives. And I love that. So we, we actually have a uh, employee resource group <clears throat> called CMS Pride, which is um, uh, for um, LGBTQ plus employees and, and also allies to connect and, 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 and support each other. Um, uh, as a person who is a non-binary trans individual, I recognize that a lot of workplaces aren't um, safe for trans people to, to work. Um, Mackenzie just released a report that trans people make about 30% less um, uh, uh, for same education, um, same experience level than, than um, 
cisgender individuals, which means not, not trans. Um, so I'm very proud to work at an agency where um, the agency is really supporting um, underserved uh, populations, because that's just one example of the, the many ways that the agency is trying to create an inclusive environment for everyone. And it's not just a uh, um, uh, uh, lip service, because it also is reflected in the, the benefits that are offered, um, uh, who qualifies for, for leave and, and the insurance coverage that were offered. Um, so I'm, uh, and, and then even also, you know, um, there are protections in place um, for individuals that might uh, potentially uh, face discrimination because we do have a grievance policy uh, uh, for folks to report anything that comes up that would be inappropriate. So I think, I think I'm very proud of an agency that isn't just saying equity is a priority, but the, 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 the way we're approaching the work reflects that, that, that we're taking action as well. I love that. And I would um, just also add to all of you all experiences and what makes you proud of CMS and working at CMS. For me as a recruiter at CMS, and I've been with the agency for over 10 years, it's our direct work that we've done in our recruitment and outreach division um, directly to minority serving institutions and working with um, underserved populations and recruitment and outreach. And me being able to, you know, single-handedly be able to have an impact on that work has been some of the greatest work that I've been able to do at the agency as well. So it sounds like we are all very proud to work at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So um, we are, we have a bunch of questions coming into the chat box. So for all of my speakers, definitely get ready. We're gonna do a little bit of Q and A. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and check um, for questions. Um, and also um, for anyone that's still on the call, I want you all to know that we are going to launch a poll um, for your feedback. So please respond to us. Um, your feedback allows this program to get better. We want to hear what you think about our webinar today. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the questions. All right, so thank you so much, Sean, um, for the live questions. Um, I have one here. Um, Sean Forms would like to answer this question live. Okay, so the question is, I do not have a background in health. However, I have an interest in diversity and inclusion and health advocacy. I studied global and international studies and I graduated during the pandemic last year. What opportunities would be available to me despite lack of experience? And I'll just go ahead and open the floor. Um, so interest in diversity and inclusion and health advocacy, Study global and international studies as a graduate. So pathways would be great opportunities um, since you just graduated during the pandemic. Um, so I'll go ahead and open up the floor um, for the folks on the line to see if you have any input. I would say yes, absolutely. The sky's the limit. Um, there are many different uh, tracks you can pursue. Um, uh, the agency has a Office of Equal Opportunity and Civil Rights that focuses on uh, diversity, equi equity, and inclusion from a CMS employee perspective, so workforce. Um, and then we have the CMS Office of Minority Health that focuses on policy and programmatic issues, including data analysis research. Um, but you know the opportunities now are, are, are not just limited to these two offices because equity is a priority for the entire agency. So, you know, if you're interested in Medicaid, for example, <clears throat> there's the, the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services and the, the, also the Duals Office that focuses on Medicaid issues and, and equity is a big part of their work. And so I could go on and on and on about um, opportunities in this space. So now is a great time to, to be exploring this. But I would encourage you to um, uh, uh, connect to opportunities that you have at your university, whether it's um, attending um, any, any work groups or grand rounds, um, participating in research related to this to show, that, to demonstrate that you really are passionate about this topic and can start to build your knowledge. Um, you don't necessarily need a formal degree on in this area, but um, it always sets you apart when you're 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 putting in that extra time to 
develop your subject matter expertise here when, when uh, applying for jobs in CMS. Perfect, thank you so much, Jordy. I'm gonna to move to the next question, which is, as someone looking to enter federal service from the private sector, so this person has six years as a medical consultant, what advice would you have for integrating successfully into the CMS culture and being a great team member? Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, and if you're entering into the federal government, read the vacancy announcement in its entirety. That is huge. A lot of people fail to read the vacancy announcements in their entirety and they miss some things. So if you're looking and you're applying, make sure that you do that and, and always feel free to ask questions. No question is a dumb question. What you don't know is what you don't know. And you know, you have to ask people that are more familiar with the, the subject matter um, that you may not be familiar with. So, anyway. Another thing I would add is um, there are different uh, pathways to um, enter the CMS workforce. I know we, we have the recent grad um, health insurance specialist now on the street that you can apply for. I think the deadline for that might be tomorrow or the day after. Um, but um, another item to consider is there are different author hiring authorities that we have for veterans and people with disabilities. So if, um, if you might qualify for any of those, I would read up and familiarize yourself with, with um, the details of that because that, those are other pathways to join the CMS workforce and um, just doing your own research can really help you get your foot in the door. Absolutely. And um, just to Jordy's point, since you are a recent graduate, you definitely want to take advantage of the pathways, the different pathways to public service through the pathways program. So there's the internship, the recent graduates program and the presidential management fellows. And I see that Sean Forbes, my colleague, is putting in some links to usajobs.gov, which is where you can find all federal positions for CMS, usajobs.gov. So I think we have a couple of resources in the inbox. Awesome. Okay, so we have, I am a healthcare MBA graduate. I would like to know, is there any, oh, lost the question. Let me go back up. Okay, I lost the question. However, the qu I read it before and the question actually was, what are the, something, this is verbatim, what are the, um, are there any, team building activities to ensure a cohesive work environment at CMS. So are oh. there any, what are the team building activities that you do in your um, respective areas? Yeah, this is, this is gonna vary. I'm sure we'll get different answers from Sheree and Jordy because this is gonna be very, um, a lot by team. Um, I'll say that when we get a new employee onto our team, especially during this this last two years in a telework environment, you know, integrating people has been um, a, a big focus for us when we get somebody new. Um, we've uh, had each team member uh, that we already had take some time with the new team member and explain to them what they did on the team, their role, their main projects, give them a sort of like brief 15, 20 minute overview. Um, but the point being that that everybody gets you know, everybody new coming onto the team gets to meet every single person on the team, um, learn about all the different work that we do, and at least start to build those relationships, which can be hard when you're only staring at each other through Zoom screens. Um, and then occasionally we'll also do team building activities as a group, either in a staff meeting because we've got a little extra time or, um, you know, last, um, this past summer, uh, we did a, a sort of like paint a painting activity together where uh, we ordered, uh, you know, painting supplies for the whole team and a sort of like paint by numbers thing. And, and we sat in a Zoom and we did that for an hour. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, so that's an example. Sheree or Jordy, did you guys want to add? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll share that we've actually also invested heavily in this area um, as an office, especially since the, the pandemic has um, 
I think for many of us, it's led to um, more isolation. And so uh, we've um, implemented some programs to um, improve engagement. So we now have a chat and chew um, lunchtime in our office that's done every few weeks. And, um, uh, you know, it's just a chance to connect and, and get to know each other better. Um, uh, we, uh, before the pandemic, we would do um, a, a picnic as an office regularly. So we're, we're, we're just getting to know each other uh, better beyond just the technical piece and just learn how to work, work more collaboratively together. So we, we have done a lot on that. And um, obviously, um, as Ray mentioned earlier, um, there, there's a lot of uh, collaboration that's always happening um, within a center and office. So there are many activities that, that result from that. Awesome. And definitely that, um, that pandemic bonding collaborative activities that you all did, I heard paint by number, we definitely had to get creative over the last few months, but I can say for OHC, the Office of Human Capital and our division, the Division of Global Hiring and Outreach, I'm really appreciative of all of the really fun, great creative ways that we've been able to connect and bond um, since we're not physically together. So I'm so happy we were able to get through some of our Q&A. Thank you so much to all of our panelists today for being here. Um, for the audience, I just wanna let you guys know that poll is there. We need your feedback, go ahead and um, Take a, take a look at the poll that um, is in the screen. Um, thank you so much for being here to the entire audience, all of the um, speakers. Um, we got a lot of really great questions and we'll continue to be here to answer questions. Um, uh oh, it looks like we're getting a countdown for our poll, which is great. Um, I wanna remind everyone that anyone who pre-registered that you will be receiving a follow-up email um, also want to remind you that this video will be posted to YouTube during the second week of December. So we will be on YouTube so you can come back and reference it, rewind and see all of the gems that were dropped throughout the entire webinar. And I also want to remind you all to register to our other fairs. We have workshop Wednesdays and we want you to be there. Um, our last event that we did uh, that we're going to do is actually going to be spotlighting four of our hiring offices within the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So finance, HR, acquisition, and IT. And that workshop is gonna be on December 1st. So if there are more questions that come in, we'll be here, but just wanna thank you for your time. And I look forward to seeing you guys at the next workshop Wednesday.